nyo po. <laughs> ah, timer. Tara. Timer agad. Katatayo lang. Grabe, hindi ako yung matagal magsalita. Hindi ako yun. on the spot. <laughs> Surprise. All right. I'm excited to share the word today. I hope you are excited to hear and be transformed by the word of God today, no? That it's indeed a privilege and an honor to be a vessel, to be your mouthpiece today. Empty me out, Lord. Let it be all about you. Holy Spirit, come. Have your way. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Palakpakan naman natin si Lord. The title of my preaching is None of These Things Move Me. None of These Things Move Me. Uh, Jer, let's go to Acts 20, 17 to 24. Acts 20, if you have your Bibles, turn your Bibles with me. <coughs> Paalalay naman, Jer. Warm water, please. Please. Okay. Buti na lang, may doktor dito sa harap. No? Acts 20, 17 to 24. Yeah, no King James. From Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, thank you, anak, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel and the grace of our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the word of God. Now, um, so just a little overview of this chapter. This is the third missionary journey of, uh, of Paul. And in this, dito po, sa, sa third missionary journey niya po na to, um, Napunta po siya sa, ito na po yung modern day Greece, Serbia, and, and Turkey. Okay? So, he was actually talking to the Ephesian leaders here. Okay? Ephesian na believers, na leaders. Yan ang mga kausap niya dito. So, it's estimated that he was in Ephesus from 54 to 57 AD. And then, he spent a year going to the cities, which we read about in Acts chapters 20 to 26. So, what happened during this third missionary journey? Uh, after niya mag-Ephesus, tatlong taon siya sa Ephesus, ito yung sinasabi niya, pupunta siya ng Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, he was imprisoned for two years. Okay? So, ano nangyari nung tatlong taon na to, tung third missionary journey niya ngayon, and his two years in Jerusalem? During the third missionary dito, uh, journey, at dito niya po sinulat yung first and second Corinthians, Dito rin sinulat yung uh, Romans and yung Philippians. So, pag na, ang Galatians, sorry, Romans and Galatians. And then Paul raised a young man named Beauticus to life. Dito po yung may nagsa-sermon siya ng mahaba, haba-haba ng sermon niya, mayroong isang young man na nakatulog, nahulog sa third floor at namatay. Binuhay naman po niya yun, ng Panginoon niya <laughs> through, through Paul. no? So, while Paul was in prison, um, there was a plot, nalaman yung plot, papatayin siya, ang daming nangyari, no? And then, Paul had the chance to present his case, yun mga nakausap niya dito, sila, sila Festus, sila Agrippa, no? 
he, pag nakita natin yung kanyang, um, yung salita niya na yan, yung statement na yan, parang pag bina, binasa mo at hindi mo na alam kung bakit yan niya sinasabi, isipin mo mayabang si Pablo, no? Biro mo, I serve the Lord with all humility and with tears. Sinabi mo pa, with all humility, no? <coughs> anyway, but, ang pinanggagalingan ni Pablo dito is that a lot of times in his life and in his ministry, he was always plotted against the Jews, no? Laging may pinaplano yung mga Jews sa kanya. Lagi siyang sinisira, no? Ngayon, yung, yung pinanggagalingan niya, kaya siya ganyan magsalita is because he is defending his ministry. Pinagtatanggol niya yung ministry niya. Kasi sinisira, pilit siyang winawasak. Di ba? Kung naalam niyo naman po yung story ni Pablo, ilang beses na kulong, binugbog, kinag, ano, natuka ng ahas, na, di ba? Na shipwreck. Ang tindi ng pinagdaanan ni Pablo. Nakaka-relate nakaka po ba tayo dyan? Okay, now, I love talking about Paul. If you can see, I always talk about Paul and Peter in my preaching. I love talking to them, but talking about them. Now, because it's such an encouragement sa ating ministeryo at sa ating walk, na minsan mahihiya kang mag-complain sa Panginoon sa pinagdadaanan mo dahil sila nga eh, eh gano'n ang pinagdadaanan nila, di ba po? Now, nakakita na ba kayo ng ano, di ba, may merong mga taong generous, no? May mga taong generous. Ano yung generous? Galante? Galog. Meron din mga kuripot. Makunat. Not maku. Yeah, mga not maku. Yeah, dayo, dayo. So, mga nakakapi pa. Alright. So, ano yan naman nakinalaman ng makunat at ano? Because Paul was very generous with his life. Pag nakita mo, he was always giving, di ba? I am being poured out as a drink offering. Diba? Parang nauubos na ako. Binibigay niya ang buong sarili niya sa Panginoon at sa ministeryo na ipinagkaloob sa kanya ng Panginoon. Ngayon, bakit ko sinasabi? May mga taong maramot sa buhay. May mga taong maramot sa buhay. It's not just in the giving. Magbigay ng oras, magbigay ng tulong. May mga taong ganun. No? And the sad thing is, kung kristyano ka at ganyan ka mag-isip, kailangan na natin mag-repent, kapatid. 2020 na. Hindi na tayo pwedeng maramot sa buhay natin. Because yung buhay na yan, which the Lord Jesus died to give you, is not for yourself alone. It's for you to share. Yung buhay na yan, yung gospel na yan, dapat buhay na buhay sa buhay mo para may nabibigay ka. The reason, bakit, Tayo, takot na takot. Ay, ako, ministry. Naku, busy yan. Naku, mag-full time. Naku, wala. Ta diba? Takot na takot. Ano, kala mo sa hinahatagahata ka ng bayawak palabas ng kweba. Ano ba naman yan? Naglilingkod tayo sa Panginoon. Diba? You're talking about it's an honor and a privilege to be serving God. To be used by the God who saved you. Kapatid, huwag kang maramot sa buhay mo. Okay, maintindihan natin bakit ganun. What This is what the message in Paul is all about. He wants us to be careful in how we live our lives because this we should lay up ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy in Matthew 6 and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Kapatid, baka yung puso mo, naiwan lang dyan sa sarili mo. Magbago na tayo, 2020 na, kurutin mo yung katabi mo. Kurutin mo, and I say, kurutin mo. <laughs> Sagot ko yan. <laughs> Wag lang magsusugat, ha? Okay, okay, okay. Someone said, the quantity of your life is up to God, but the quality of your life is yours to choose. Diba? The quantity of your life is up to God. Si Lord Amelam, gano'ng kahaba ang buhay mo? Pero kapatid, yung, kwal, yung kalidad ng buhay na, that you are living right now, yung pahiram na buhay na yan sa'yo ng Panginoon, nasa sa'yo yan, kapatid. Nasa choice mo yan. Nasa mga judgment mo yan kung paano mo ibibigay, ibabalik, at magbibigay puri ka sa Panginoon sa buhay mo na yan. Amen ba? Alright. In other words, choose to live a life that matters. So how did Paul serve the Lord? Number one, 
my first point. Paul pointed people towards Jesus and not to himself. Let's go to verse 18 and 19. That's why he said, And when he had come to him, he said to them, this is the Ephesian leaders, imagine ang kinakausap niya dito, in all, almost in all uh, the book of Acts, yung mga, yung mga preaching, yung mga sermon dyan ang kausap ang believer. Dito, ito po, believer ang kausap niya dito. And when he had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you. Papano ako nabuhay sa kasama ninyo. Serving the Lord with all humility, with tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. First point, bakit ko nasabi na si, si Pablo, pinopoint niya ang tao kay Lord kasi he served with all humility. Everybody say humility. You know, there can't be a transformation in your life without humility. So kung sinasabi mo sa akin na mababa ang humility natin at kristyano pa kapatid, mag-repent din tayo ngayong araw na to. Kasi hindi tayo uusad, hindi ka patuloy na babago hanggat ang dami mong yabang sa katawan. We need to get rid of ourselves. Hindi ka makakapagpatuloy nang meron kang ganun. Meron kang yabang, may ganun ka, may angas ka sa sarili mo. Dahil feeling mo, bakit? Nakarating ako dito ng, kaya ko naman ah. Kaya ko nga yung ginagawa ng pastor eh. Kaya ko nga yung ano eh. Mas magaling pa nga ako manta dito, magaling pa ako. E di ikaw na. <laughs> e di gawin mo lahat. Ikaw na rin magligpit, di ba? <laughs> ikaw mag-set up, ikaw kumanta, ikaw mag-preach. E di ikaw na rin magligpit. <laughs> And tapos yung feeling mo, the pag, pag umalis ako, Pag umalis ako, mapipilay kayong lahat. Ay, nako kapatid, pag ganyan na ugali mo, shoot na shoot tayo niyan. <laughs> okay. So, even, even the, humility is one of the greatest characters that a Christian would ever take in his life, would ever have in his life. Because, ang humility, bumab, nagbabaw down sa harapan ng Panginoon. Hinahayaan niya ang Panginoon ang maitaas at hindi siya. Hinahayaan niya ang Panginoon ang makilala at hindi pangalan niya. Hinahayaan niya na ang Panginoon ang kikilos on his or her behalf. Amen? Kaya nga, and if my people, 2 Corinthians 7.14, and if my people will humble them who are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. And forgive their sin and heal their land. There is so much about humility that can transform lives and eventually the nation. Kaya nga po tayo hinahambol natin ng sarili natin, nag-19, is often translated as a weakness. Para siyang considered, you know, uh, weak, low, mababa, ganyan. Pero it's mentioned 200 times in the Bible and it's always presented as a virtue. Bakit? Kasi yung, yung virtue na to, ang kristyano, dahil tayo ay meet, dahil tayo ay humble, because we serve a God, ina-acknowledge natin the bigness of God in our lives. Kaya, this is, um, kaya ito ay isang importanting virtue sa atin. In the Christian ministry, tell you, mga kapatid, it's not about extraordinary men and women of power. Sa ministeryo, sa gobyerno siguro, sa sekular. It's about extraordinary men and women in power. Pero sa church, sa, king, sa kingdom ni Lord, it's not about these extraordinary men and women of power. It's not about that. The core of our ministry, the core of our service to the Lord, ano ba nangyayari? We need a Savior. Lahat tayo, wala ka ipagmamalaki dahil we all need a savior. And then, who can save you and me? And he would use the weakest, the most guilty, the most broken of all of us. Yan ang, that's the business of our God. So there's no place na gusto mong ma-recognize, gusto mo ng applause, gusto mo ng, ng reward, gusto mo ng appreciation, gusto... I mean, those are good, but you don't require that to serve. Amen? Tim Keller says, 
A humble and weak person will show a crucified Savior better to a listener than a polished, pulled-together expert. Because that's how it happened for us, diba? For you and me. We weren't saved by pulling ourselves together. But by admitting we were sinners and calling on the one who was pulled apart for us. Diba? Naligtas ka ba nang dahil you keep yourself together? Dahil sa harap ni Lord, you're trying to polish yourself? Dahil sa harap ni Lord, nagpapakamalinis ka? Ganun ka ba naligtas? But we were saved in our most broken time. We were saved in our most undone. You know, in my... Naalala ko si Mama may tinuro about modeling. It's very important na lalo tayo parents, we need to be models, no? Ang hirap ituro ng humility. Di ba? Ang turo ng humility. But one time, si Reese, you know, my daughter, she's just so smart. Para siyang abogado. Ganun. Tindi. Mara marami kaming conversation that's just, wow, amazing. Anyway, minsan nagkamali ako. Kinokorek na kasi yung ano ko, yung English ko, tsaka pronunciation ko. At six year, at five years old, she does that. Mommy, you said bad, you said bog, not, it should be bad. <laughs> so she's very keen on yung, anak, ewan ko ba, nama na agad. <laughs> <laughs> Kailangan ng cutting off na <laughs> So, anyway. So, one time I said something that was wrong. And then she said, Mommy, you made a mistake. <gasps> Why? What did I say? You said like this. But it should be like this. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did. I said that. So, I had to teach her na it's okay to make mistakes. So, uh, uh, yeah, 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 you're right. I was wrong. I'm sorry, darling. So, you know, I'll, I'll say it better next time. Ha, 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 you made the mistake. Sabi niya, but you, you're a mommy and you make mistakes? <laughs> sabi niya sa akin, you're a mommy and you make mistakes? Eh, sabi ko, well, not all grown-ups have it together, darling. Everyone makes mistakes. Daddy makes mistakes, I make mistakes, Mama Yi and Lola, and we all make mistakes. Even you make mistakes. So you have to just teach them. And I, I think one of sa atin, the mga disciples, leaders, paano nyo imamodel yung humility? Pa, paano? Dapat hindi tayo all about delegation. Delegation is good. Pero dapat nakakita rin nila na tayo mismo kaya nating maglinis. Na walang diferensya, anun ba naman kung maglinis? Eh sa bahay nga, naglilinis tayo. Dito, ayaw natin magligpit. Di ba nakakahiya naman yun? <laughs> but I'm talking about humility. Serving the Lord with all humility, with all lowliness, without regard whether ina-appreciate ka o hindi. Amen? Modeling. Si mama nang galing yan. Modeling. Dapat makita sa inyo. Okay. Number two. Paul was faithful to God and to his calling. Verses 20 to 21. How I kept back nothing that was helpful. Wala daw siyang hinold back. Lahat itinuro niya. But proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Tindi ng pagtuturo. Di ba? nag evangelize siya doon, publicly. Lahat na mahahagip ng salita ng Diyos, magsasalita siya. Hindi lang siya natapos doon. Nagdo-door to door pa. I'm gonna knock on your door, ring on your bell, knock on your windows too. O, oh, ba? Tatanda, o. Oh. Electrolux. Hindi <laughs> nyo na alam yan, ba? Electrolux. <laughs> so, that's how faithful he was. He said, testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Alam mo si Pablo, hindi siya selective sa ginagawa niya. Ganon siya faithful. Ang faithful na servant, hindi selective. Ay, dito lang ako sa mayayaman. <laughs> Aabang ako dito. O dito lang ako sa pang-community lang ako. Allergic ako sa mayaman. He preached the word both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. 
Remember, the gospel is a matter of life and death. We are in the business. What the message that we carry is a matter of life and death. Because itong life and death na to hindi lang to sa physical. Eternal ang impact ng mensaheng dala-dala mo. Yang buhay na nakikita sa iyo. Eternal ang impact niyan sa tao. Amen. But don't be legalistic. Does it have to be in the confines? Dapat nasa, dapat nasa ano kami, nasa conference kami. Dapat ganito, sa ganito makikita. Dapat, dapat makikita na nag-layhan sa ko. Dapat makikita na gaganyan ako. Ano yan? <laughs> Di ba? Let's stop that. Walang pilian. Kahit saan ka idala ng Panginoon. Ay nako, minsan talaga namang, I will admit to you, minsan may mga mahirap talagang share na Lord, but Ba't pinadala mo naman sa buhay ko naman ito? Takalaga naman. Sakit sa bangs. May mga ganun. Eh pero pinadala sa'yo ng Lord. Ano gagawin mo? Di mo siya sera? Kahit pa paano, ipilit mo, masabi mo lang, maparamdam mo lang at the very least. Hindi mo man ma-preachan, maparamdaman mo lang na mahal sila ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen. So Paul was uh, an evangelist. You know, lahat naman tayo mayroon tayong evangelistic calling. Agree ba tayo doon? Yes. Be prepared to share the word in and out of season. Yes? yes? Yes. Pero may specific calling ang Lord sa kada buhay. May unique, that's unique to your skill set, that's unique to your talents, and you have to know what it is. Because if you don't find out, you're gonna waste your life. Sasayangin mo, you're just here cruising through life. Eh, paano kung kunin ka na ni Lord mamaya o bukas? Hindi mo man lang nalaman kung paano ka dito? Ano ba talaga ang dapat mong gawin? Eh, nakakandamatay nga mga tao, nakakanda suicide dahil na nafe-feel nila na walang saysa yung buhay nila. Ikaw naman, nandi dito ka, nakakapakinig ka. Sinasabi sa'yo, may general direction. Mag-seek ka, tinuturuan naman tayo ng intimacy dito. Mag-seek tayo sa Lord. You should It is your spiritual responsibility to inquire of the Lord. You know, your pastor will not do it for you. Your discipler will not do it for you. You have to do the seeking yourself. Yung iba kasi inasa eh. Ano, pagharap mo kay Lord, ano sasabihin mo? Ay, di ako na-inform, Lord. Di ako na-inform, Lord. Hindi ko alam yung pala yung dapat kong gawin. Eh, tapos na. Time's up. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, there's no turning back. Mababalik mo ba ang oras? Buti kung near-death experience yon at nakaharap ka kay Lord. At sinabi sa'yo ni Lord, Hoy, hindi mo pa ginagawa yung gagawin mo, kaya bumalik ka. Swerte mo kung ganun, di ba? Swerte. Oh. <coughs> eh buti kung magkaganon. Eh paano kung kunin ka na talaga ni Lord? Sige, Lord, te teka lang ha. Di pa ako na-inform. Hindi ko kasi nakita yung memo, Lord. Paano na? My good and faithful servant, paano na? Paul was burdened when silent in Acts 18.5. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is Christ. He was compelled by the Spirit. Maraming beses na sabi yan. He was compelled by the Spirit. If you are servants, taas ang kamay ng stewards. 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 Ay, hindi nila alam na steward sila. Steward ka po. Ini-inform ko po kayo. <laughs> steward ka po. <laughs> no, stewards. In 1 Corinthians 4.2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Kung ikaw ay steward, ang concern mo is faithfulness. Ang steward, hindi niya obligasyon na mag-provide sa house. Kasi si Lord ang nagpo-provide, siya ang nagmamanage. Yung concern mo, maging faithful ka. Tiba? Ngayon, does it have to be big things? Actually, no. If you notice, the Lord 
Meron siyang ways na ang simple, napaka-ordinaryo na ginagawa, pero extraordinary yung na-accomplish. Example, that kid who had five loaves and two fish. Anong ginawa ng bata? Inoffer lang niya sa Lord. And then, God made the impossible. In our lives, hindi naman kailangan grandioso yung ginagawa. Maging faithful ka doon sa maliliit na bagay. And then, pagkakatiwalaan ka sa malalaking bagay. And then, the Lord will do the rest. But your focus and my focus is to be faithful in what we do. Amen? Number three. Paul relied on the Holy Spirit for direction, anointing, boldness, and courage. Verses 22 to 23, please. And see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. Pambihira, no? He knew. He already knew that imprisonment was waiting for him. Alam niya na ng paparating ng mga tribulation. So, Paul received direction from the Holy Spirit. Direct revelation, di ba? Na, ngayon, nakakarinig. Bless tayo because we're taught in the prophetic. We flow in the prophetic, di ba? We get to hear the Holy Spirit. Eh, para sampayo kung di mo pinapakinggan. Ang tanong, nakikinig ka ba? Mm -mm. What is, what is it like para kay Pablo? Let's have a picture of what it is relying on the Holy Spirit. It is like being mastered by a person and a power not your own. The Holy Spirit had monopoly of Paul. You just like sa atin. Because we're spirit-led people, we're spirit-filled people, dapat yung, mono, yung, yung Holy Spirit ang may monopoly sa buhay mo. Hindi ikaw. Hindi karnal. Diba? In Romans 8.5.8, Romans 8.5.8, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Everyone say life and peace. peace. Diba? Because the carnal mind is in enmity against God, for it is subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Hindi talaga. Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine, we're in a success, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number two, it is being content not to know in detail what tomorrow may bring. Did Paul, nireveal ba? Nireveal part by part. Diba minsan sinasabi na he tells his prophets, diba natsasabi naman niya sa ating komisan anong gagawin niya. But not all. Sana oil, pero hindi. Because Part by part, we prophesy in parts, di ba? So every race that God appoints for His children to run, alam mo minsan, yung race na yan, parang biglang nawawala yan eh. May mga moment sa lakad natin na parang biglang, oh, teka lang, ba't pinatay? Pinatayan ako ng ilaw, hindi ko na alam, nasaan na ba yung race? Sometimes it happens. Di ba? But you go back. You go back to the last clear revelation of the Lord. Clear revelation of the Holy Spirit. Saan ka ba talaga ipopoint ka ulit, babalik ka ulit kung saan ka nawala? But one by one, makikita mo siya as you go along. To say, then to say, I have to know what's coming. I always have to know what's coming. Lord, I have to know. Babae tayo, di ba? Lagi tayong detalyado mag-isip. Yun na nakakapraning kay Lord. Eh. Lord, sandali lang. Anong susunod? Eh, di ba? Minsan, big picture na yung bibigyan niya lang sa'yo, di ba? Iba-iba eh. 
Ba ba? Pero nakakapraning not knowing what's gonna happen in detail. But that's how it is to rely on the Holy Spirit because you know na kahit saan ka makarating, hindi ka iiwan ng Panginoon. He will never leave you high and dry. Amen? It is the courage not to stop running when the race course leads through suffering. Relying on the Holy Spirit is the courage not to stop running even when the course leads to suffering. Pagka nakarelay ka sa Holy Spirit, kahit alam mo na may peligrong mangyayari, panatag ang loob mo dahil alam mo na hindi ka pababayaan ng Panginoon. May pagdadaanan kang may anyway because the Holy Spirit is with you. How many times na alam na natin, hindi na alam ko na yung baga may time ng pruning, nararamdaman mo na yun, nadidiscern mo na yun. Di ba? Nadidiscern mo na siya. Yung talagang Lord, susunugin na ito na naman. <laughs> break, break, break. <laughs> But as Christians, you know that our course, will it's inevitable. The suffering is there. Because God uses that to change you and me. God uses that to mold you and me para sumut ka dun sa destiny mo. Di ba? Eh, kailangan ka niyang kiskisin. Ang dami mong ugali na masapa ay kiniis-isis ka ni Lord para sumut ka sa destiny mo. Kasi right now, square ka pa eh. Eh, circle yun. O sige, di triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Mas masakit <laughs> sakit yung kanto nun, di ba? <laughs> Pag ganun yun, no? Sa, sa circle ka isushoot. Di ba? <laughs> but some of our tomorrows are really gonna hurt. But it's better to know na, na you're, hindi ka na didiskaril. At least alam mo na hindi ka diskaril. Amen. Ang masaklap dito, may pinagdaanan ka ng suffering, discaril ka. ba? Diba? Wala ka pa sa covering ng Lord kasi nagrebelde ka. O paano na? ba? Diba? Anong babalikan mo? The cross. You humble yourself. ba? Diba? Babalik ka ulit sa humility. Grabe. Grabe si Lord. Sisingit ko lang ah. May encouragement ako sa women. Alam mo, studies show that women are mas uh, less risk averse sila. Hindi sila takot mag-risk. Ang mga babae, mas shoot sila pang missionary. Ang mga babae, na, study yan ha, study. Oo. Proverbs 31, 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. Woo! Diba? Kasi there is any person, there is uncertainty in the future. That's really scary. Diba? Pagka hindi mo kilala ang Panginoon, talaga nakakatakot yun. Kasi yung buhay mo nasa kamay mo. Eh, limitado ka. Eh, ang Panginoon knows everything about you. And Paul wanted, number four, Paul wanted to finish strong and with joy. Verse 24. But none of these things move me. Everyone say, none of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. So that I may finish the race with joy. Amen. And the ministry which I received from the Lord to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. You know, Paul was really determined to finish strong. And he was determined to finish with joy. Yung pag-finish nito sa finish line, yung pag-aganon, hindi ito yung ano ah, hindi yung pag-ganon mo ng, ng finish, ah, nag-collapse ka na. I died. Hindi siya ganon. <laughs> <laughs> Ang pagising lang, kaya naantok na kayo eh. Naririnig ko na, krk-krk, gawa ganon yun sa nyo oh finish line and with joy. Yun ang gusto ni Pablo at yun, ini-encourage niya yung leaders not to give up. 
Push. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, push. Yes. Ito kasi nakakalungkot, no? Minsan, alam niyo yung mga one-hit wonders? Parang si Carly Rae Jepsen. Hey, I just met you. This is crazy. <laughs> hindi, hindi. One-hit wonder siya, di ba? Wala na siya sumikat na kanta. Yun ang ibig ko sabi. O Milly Vanilli, para sa matatanda ulit. Wala na. Fake singer pa. Okay. So, these are one-hit wonders. Nakakalungkot dahil may mga Kristiyanong so on fire. Di ba? They made a decision. Nagkakanda taas ng kamay. Nagkakanda gulong dito. Ganyan, ganyan. Pero, namatay agad yung apoy. Namatay agad. Nag-fizzle out. What happened? Kasi they're in it for the emotion. A lot of things. Napagod. Na front slide. Na front slide. Ano yung front slide? Yung, ang bat, yung bata pa sa Panginoon na take in, he took in a lot of ministry na subsub. Na over, na overwhelm. Ayun ang nangyayari. Yun, di ba sa spiritual leadership, kaya nga daw iingatan ng pagbibigay ng responsibilidad. Di ba? Na front slide. Napagod, napatig, hindi niya nabalanse eh. Yung work, yung pamilya, yung church, na over sa church. Ano nangyari? Nakalimutan niya na wala siya sa konteksto ng ministry. Napabayaan ng pamilya. Nap- Bakit si feeling niya, Lord, Lord, Lord? There's what we call the dilemma of the, ano, yung living sacrifice. Yung 12, Romans 12.1. Romans 12, may dilemma yun eh. Offering yourselves as a living sacrifice. Malalim to, mga kapatid. Ito yung essence ng isa sa mga fundasyon, foundation ng ating pagkakristyano. Dapat dumating ka sa point na nauunawaan mo that your life is a living sacrifice to the Lord. Dapat nauunawaan mo yun sa puso mo, maliban sa John 3.16. Kasi may pagbabagong kailangan maganap. Amen ba? Amen. Eh, paano na tayo 2020 na? Eh, may clear vision pa tayo. Paano pa tayo be-breakthrough niyan? You know, when the sacrifice, when the flame gets hot, paano ba pinapalakas ang, ang ano, pag nagsisiga tayo, nagniningas? You want your sacrifice to reach the throne of God? Burn more. How? Ganun lang ba yun? Papaypayan mo lang ba kung ano in-offer mo? Hindi. Dagdagan mo ng in-offer. More of yourself has to die. More of yourself has to burn. That flesh has to burn so that it will be an aroma to the Lord. Kalugud-lugud na offering, na sacrifice and acceptable to the Lord. Otherwise, yung buhay natin dito, pag wala tayo sa ganung mindset, this is all play. Don't make it a wasted life. We got to make it a goal, just like Paul, that we finish strong, that we finish with joy. Hindi ka dapat mag-settle kung nasaan ka ngayon. But we are, we move from glory to glory. Di ba? In 1 Corinthians 15.58, Paul understood, sabi niya, the pain, the cost of following Jesus, the fatigue. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Corinthians to, ganun ulit sinabi niya. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. In other, wor- in other versions, always abound in the work of the Lord. Do what is beyond the minimum. Hindi yung nandun ka lang, sapat lang. Give more. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not 
in vain. He said, let not... What's the first utos? The, the first command. <laughs> Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Don't let your finances move you. Don't let your marriage problems, marital problems move you. Don't let the ministry move you. Move you from where? Just stand mo na kay Lord that you believe in the resurrection, that you believe in Jesus Christ, that you believe that He's more than able to save you, that He is more than able to bless you, that He is more than able and willing to take you to your destiny. Yung belief na yon na tinatayuan mo kagapatid na si Jesus is the hope of glory, wag mong hayaang mayanig na mga pangangailangan ng flesh. Don't let fear move you. Don't let fear of lack move you. Don't let, don't let your, these things, the external move you. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, it's all in the context of eternity. Kapag ka, ang mindset mo, nandito ka lang sa now, wala kang iniimpok para sa eternity. Hindi ka para dito, pang eternity ka. You need to invest in what matters. <coughs> What are you really living for? Alam mo, hindi masama na alalahanin natin ang pamilya. Balansihin ko lang. Siyempre, bilang magulang, gusto natin mag-provide. Gusto natin lahat yan. Maayos, makapag-aral. We all want these things and these things are good. But don't, don't let it get in the way that it would cause you to backslide, cause you to turn away from the Lord. It's not easy. Madada pa at madada pa ka. Kaya nga, we have discipleship. Kaya nga, meron tayong ito. Meron tayong congregation. May, we have one another. But remind yourself that you are for eternity. You live for eternity, not here. So don't limit yourselves in the four corners of the church, in, the, in our new office downstairs. Huwag mo limitahan, nakaka-attend mo lang. Attend, attend ako ng attend kasi masipag ako sa... Hindi yan. Application. Sa labas. Sa labas. Paul says, I do not account my life of any value as precious to myself if only I may finish the course. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Anong naging focus ni Pablo? Is the crown of righteousness. That the King of Kings, that the Lord of Lords will Himself put on His head. That one day, lahat tayo, gagawin natin lahat yun, haharap tayo sa Panginoon. At hindi natin sasabi, hindi po ako na-inform sa calling ko. Hindi tayo haharap ng ganun. Haharap tayo na meron tayong ginawa. We made something of our lives. We lived, lived a life well lived in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. I want a declaration. I have a declaration. Can we all stand? I'm gonna flash it. Paki flash. One, two, three, we will read it. Uh, three slides lang naman yan. Very short. I want you to say it from the heart. Hugutin mo yan sa kaibutura ng puso mo. Dahil yan ang magiging call natin sa buhay. One, two, three. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, 
slow down or back away. My past is redeemed. My future is secure. I am finished and done with low living, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, mundane talking, cheap living, and dwarfed goals. I no longer need distinction, position, applause, or popularity. I don't have to be first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on His presence, walk by patience, live by prayer, and labor by His power. My goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way rough, my companions few, my guide reliable, and my mission clear. I cannot be bought, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, or roam in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, or let up until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till He comes. Give till I drop. Preach till all know. And work till He stops me. And when He comes for His own, He will have no problem recognizing me. My banner is clear. Let's give the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. And if you are here, the altar is open. We want to pray for you. You want a fresh touch from the Lord. You need strengthening. You need strengthening. Come on. You want a new direction. You want a change of direction in your life, in your ministry. Come. Give you my 
Sino po rito ang may sakit at nananampalataya kayo na ang Panginoon po ang magpapagaling ng inyong sakit? Lumapit po kayo rito sa harapan. He is our healer. He has compassion on those who are sick. Come, Jesus is the healer. We will pray for you because we have the Holy Spirit in us. He is the healer. By the blood of the Lamb, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, be healed today. Siya po ang magpapagaling. Kayo po yung nananampalataya na siya ang gagawa ng hindala. Lumapit po kayo dito. By the blood of the Lamb, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, receive healing. Healing in Jesus' name. Healing. Healing in the blood of Jesus Christ. to our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God is good. God. Can you just sit down for a little bit? Bago po uh, madismiss po tayo, of course, uh, reminder lang po bukas mayroong soaking. Amen. At uh, punta po tayo dito sa sa Victory Gallery uh, dito sa fourth floor. Uh, it starts at uh, 4.30 until 8.30 po tayo. Amen. Para mabaptize tayo ng Holy Spirit, kung hindi pa kayo nababaptize o ma-ignite more yung iyong passion for God. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit will flow para sa atin lahat when we preach the gospel for its glory. Amen. Amen. Ngayon po, ang second offering po natin ay para sa mga Taal Volcano Victims. Last last week po, nagpa-offering tayo. And uh, ang mga ang receipt, ang main recipient po ay yung ating mga members doon sa ano, sa Alitadkad. And then we have a network church na nandiyan sa sa Lemery. So, ang gina ang gagawin po natin, nagbibigay tayo ng financial help per family. Amen. Pero yung mga sosobra dito, magkakaroon po ng mission trip doon at magmi-minister tayo. May marami na pong nagbibigay ng mga mga ano, mga in-kind. Ibig sabihin mga damit, pagkain, whatever. Dalin pagkaganyan po ang gusto niyo'ng ibigay, dalhin niyo lang po doon sa office sa ating center sa sa baba. Amen. Pero ito pong offering na ito, Uh, mapupunta po do sa mga families ng churches at do, nakaka-network sa atin at sa mobilization po ng mission na na-schedule. I-announce po natin yun dito. So I challenge you, let, let us be generous. Let's be generous.
Thank you, Lord, dito sa opportunity, Lord, na makatulong kami sa mga kapatiran na naapektuhan po ng Taal Volcano. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be a blessing. Lord, we just want to lift up this offering to you. Use it, Lord God, to relieve, Lord God, to be a relief for your children that have been affected in Jesus' name. And Lord, return it to your people a hundredfold. Amen and amen. That is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tumayo po tayong lahat. Um, Pastora Roslyn, can you... Ah, si, hindi, si ano na. Hindi, hindi, si Pastora Tin, ang ano yung tingnan siya. Sharapaka. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Raise our hands to heaven. Lord, we thank you for your message today. We know that this message, hindi namin narinig to in vain. I declare in degree fruitfulness. I declare in degree transformation. I declare in degree breakthrough in every area of their lives. Lord, receive our worship, receive our lives as offering, as living sacrifice to you, Lord God. Salamat, Panginoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.